Okay, we're back. Got things cleaned up a little bit. Got the egg roll bowl finished. And I wanted to show you how pretty this is. Here it is. I forgot to mention that we also add sliced green onions at the end. It's fun to keep a few extra for a little garnish. Um, sometimes your chips are even like scoopies. You can scoop up some of your egg roll filling. So this is your egg roll in a bowl. It's delicious. My granddaughter's already been down and gotten a huge bowl full when I was taking a break, getting ready to do the next segment. Then because she could smell it and she was like, oh, is it done yet? So this is it. Hope you try it. I really, really do. So on to the next recipe. And hopefully I won't knock my tower over here. The next one we're going to do is ramen noodle salad. Now, if you haven't had this, this has been around for years. If you haven't had this, you're really missing a treat. It is delicious. And again, something that people, I think, are amazed by that's where they don't want cabbage. So one of the first things that you need is some ramen noodles, two packs, chicken flavor, any brand, doesn't matter. And most of us are familiar with ramen noodles and know how inexpensive they are. And I'm trying to bust these up in my hands when normally I would just put them on the counter and bash them good. So however you want to do it is fine. But you want to take the packet out. And of course it's always on the bottom. It doesn't matter which way I open the package. It's always on the bottom. There's the flavor packet. You only need one of these for this recipe. You don't want to do use two. It'll be way too salty. So one of these, toss or set aside for something else, whatever. And we're only going to use one for the dressing. So we have the noodles broken up. And I'll keep working on these. Pardon me for a minute while I bash one. This is so much more fun. So they're partly broken up. So then, this is, and this is an easy fast thing. So look at your recipe. There's a dressing that goes on this. And it starts part way down with the oil. Now we have oil, black pepper, apple cider vinegar, and sugar splenda. Little tip here. I've learned over the years the hard way. Unless you have several sets of measuring cups and want to dirty them all, check out your ingredients and see what's wet and what's dry. Measure your dry ingredients first. Reason being that once you use um, your cups for oil or vinegar or water or milk, whatever it is for your recipe, then they're wet. Um, then you can't use them for dry because then everything dry, like sugar or whatever, will stick. So, in this case, I'm going to go with the sugar first because that is the dry ingredient that needs a measuring cup. So, looking at our recipe, the very last ingredient is one quarter cup of sugar or Splenda. And today we're going to use sugar. One quarter cup. Then, let's go with the vinegar, and we need one quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. So again, we're going to use this Bragg's Organic, because that's what I have. And if you don't have apple cider vinegar, the flavor is a little different than white vinegar, but if all you have on hand is white vinegar, just use it. It's okay. It doesn't make a huge difference in flavor. All right, now we need three quarters of a cup of oil. And my measuring cups don't have three quarters. I've got one, one half, one third, and one quarter. But it's not a big deal because one half plus one quarter will give me three quarters. I'm using canola oil. Um, some people don't care for canola oil. I like it a lot because I don't really use a lot of oil to begin with, but it's a very um, tasteless oil. It doesn't lend a heavy flavor like olive oil does, for example. So this is my choice for the oil that I do use. 
was a half. Now we're going to do the quarter. So one half plus one quarter is three quarters, so we're good to go there. And then the last thing we need is one half teaspoon of black pepper. Let me find my one half teaspoon measuring spoon. My black pepper right here. Um, this recipe I think needs the black pepper. If you're not a black pepper fan, you can leave it out. I think it really makes a difference. But that's fine if you don't want it. Now, I have a whisk. You can also put this in a, uh, like a jar with a tight fitting lid and shake it up really good if you wanted to to blend it better. If you didn't want to fool with using a whisk, it's just an oil and vinegar and sugar and black pepper dressing. So you stir that all up really good. It only takes a minute. And really what you want is to have make sure that the sugar gets dissolved in the dressing. That's it for the dressing. So now all we need to do we need a bag of coleslaw mix. Oh, there it is again, <laughs> the coleslaw mix. And we need some green onions. I've got those too. I'm going to find my scissors. And we're going to cut our bag of coleslaw mix open. Again. Coleslaw mix. Easy peasy. Dump it in the bowl. Easy can that be? Now, I like to kind of go ahead and toss it around with the dressing. Or you can wait till you put the rest of it in. It doesn't matter. Make sure that you use a bowl that's big enough that you actually can stir this without getting it everywhere. Don't ask me how I know that can happen. <laughs> so the next thing we need is green onions. I cut these ahead of time. This is a quarter cup of green onion sliced. Now, I didn't show you how to do that, but look, you basically just clean your onions and lay them up out side by side, lined up on a cutting board, and then you use a sharp knife and slice them. However, if you are not comfortable using a knife or knife skills just aren't your thing, which I totally get, a lot of people just are never really comfortable with knives in the kitchen. Here's another thing you can do. Check it out. It's kitchen scissors. <laughs> it's easy. Watch this. You literally just cut the onion with the scissors. It's easy. As long as you don't cut the end of your finger off with the scissors. So there's an alternative that you can use instead of slicing those tiny little onions with a knife. But I did these ahead, so we're gonna dump these in pretty that is. Adds a little green with the purple and the orange. This is, and see I'm slopping that out of the bowl. This is some another thing that you could put like those matchstick carrots in from the egg roll bowl that you have left over. This is something you could do with those too. You could put them in the salad if you really like carrots. You could add more instead of just going with what's in here. And by the way, coleslaw mixes come in different ways. I purposely bought the tricolor because I love the colors. I love, especially in the salad, I like the contrast of the purple cabbage and the green cabbage and the uh, orange of the carrots. But you also can find um, coleslaw mix that does not have purple cabbage and often doesn't have carrots either. And there's also one called angel hair that is a very, very fine shredded cabbage if you would prefer that. Like for this salad, you could use that instead. So there's no hard and fast rule. You can also buy a head of cabbage and slice it yourself real thin. That's what I usually do for the egg roll bowl, is I buy cabbage and then I just hand slice it because I want to put up so many other things in it that I don't really need the, the pre-bagged. But anyway, so the other thing we have that we can put in our salad now is a half cup of toasted sunflower seeds. But at the bottom of the recipe, if you notice, I not only mentioned that this is really good if you chill it overnight, but also that you can substitute sliced or slivered almonds. Now, I have sunflower seeds, 
they're in this jar because um, what I have came in these real small packets and I wanted to make sure and keep them fresh and keep them all together. So I dumped them in a, a jar that I had recycled and I have them in here. But today I want almonds in mine and I really like these thin sliced almonds. I don't know if you can see them very well, but they're super thin sliced. You can also get them sliver that are like in um, long, inch long pieces, chunks. So I'm going to put these in in place of the sunflower seeds. But either way is fine, and you can actually put both in if you want. So I'm going to dump those in. Stir it up a little bit. Get it coated really nicely. Then... Let's put some in a bowl and see how pretty it is. Oh, you should have stopped me. You know what I forgot? The noodles that I beat to death. And the chicken flavor. <laughs> that just goes to show you, it doesn't matter how seasoned a can or, or cook that you are, you can always make mistakes. So I'm putting the ramen noodles in now and stirring them in. And see, I could redo this whole segment and you'd never know I made a mistake. But this just goes to show we all make mistakes. So the chicken flavor goes in with the oil and the vinegar and the sugar and the black pepper. And now you know Dee Dee makes mistakes all the time. So I'm going to put that in a bowl some of it and there's your salad it's pretty it smells good if you're not a person who likes coleslaw that with um, mayonnaise dressing you may love this it's the ramen noodles stay crunchy so you have some crunch with it uh, you could put onions in this you can you know you could put other vegetables in this if you want but this is the, the easy short version even with the mistake so here's your bowl shows you what you got give this recipe a try fun to share with friends like for a, a dinner for something different instead of a toss salad so the next thing i'm going to mention but i'm not going to demonstrate it because it takes too long that has to do with again coleslaw mix so one of the recipes in here on the last page is coleslaw to can or freeze or fridge. This recipe is really neat. It again is another recipe that is um, can be a mayonnaise free coleslaw. I have friends who wouldn't touch mayonnaise if you uh, force them to <laughs> force them to. They just they don't like mayonnaise. But you can follow this recipe. You can can it in a boiling water bath. It's safe. It's a pickled cabbage. After you can it, you can eat it the way it is. You can drain it really, really well and mix mayonnaise in it, and it's delicious. Or you can make it, and you can pack it in containers and freeze it, like in portion sizes. It thaws out, and it's actually still crunchy. It's the craziest thing. Or the third option is you can make it, put it in the fridge, and you can eat from it for at least two weeks. It stays that good that long. And I wanted to include it because it was another way you could use coleslaw mix, this convenience package, and make something really delicious. Easy, inexpensive, um, nice way to, you know, add to a dinner. The great thing to make, that or the ramen noodle salad, great thing to make if you have to go to like a covered dish dinner or you're going to families, you know, uh, uh, for dinner and you want to take something and contribute something. So then anyway, I wanted to make sure you had that recipe as well. And if anybody tries it, let me know. It's really popular on my canning group. Um, we really love having the option of having a form of cabbage in jars because you can't can reg regular cabbage without pickling it. So anyway, that's where we're at. And I will bring you back shortly for the thing you've been waiting for, which is the dessert. Peanut butter punch. See you in a minute.